Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another repair video for you. Yes, it is a repair video this time. My 1979 Ford Fairmont, straight six, 200 cubic inch displacement, 3.3 liters. Runs great, runs like a champ, except for when I go to start it in the mornings. There's a lot of start, stall, start, stall kind of stuff. <laughs> The other day I'm driving and I kind of smell gas and I'm wondering what the heck's going on. So I popped the hood and lifted the air cleaner only to find that the fuel filter is leaking a bit of fuel onto the intake manifold. Kind of dangerous and not really good for the gas mileage. I could remedy these problems just by replacing the fuel filter and doing probably just a minor choke adjustment. However, where's the fun in that? Because I have always wanted to do a carburetor rebuild video for the longest time, and this presents an ideal opportunity because this is one of the simpler carburetors. It's just a one barrel motorcraft, uh, I believe made by Holly, uh, that we can go through that shows all the basics of what you'd find normally in a carburetor and in a carburetor rebuild situation. Like I said, I'm gonna take this opportunity. We'll rebuild this carburetor. I'm gonna do in a separate video the actual setup. I'm doing that because uh, there are times where, as I said, you don't necessarily have to rebuild the carburetor. All you need to do is a few tweaks, a few adjustments. So I'm gonna make that into a separate video in and of itself, but this video is going to involve the actual rebuild. Uh, and then the next video following this one will be the uh, one on adjusting it. And I'll put a link in the description to that when it becomes available. Without further ado, let's uh, get into this. And let's get this carburetor off this car. Next, it's time to actually remove the carburetor from the engine. Uh, this can be sort of a mixed bag. Some of these are gonna be relatively easy, like what I have here, and some more difficult. Some will have many, many, many vacuum lines, and some of them not so much. A lot of times I find, even with the vehicles with lots of vacuum lines, that when you just let the vacuum line lay where, it's, where it was hooked up before, many times you can identify where that vacuum line is supposed to be placed. Now, if that's not the case and you, and you want an extra level of insurance, just take a piece of masking tape or just some piece of tape or, or even label makers. I've seen people use those. Wrap that around the vacuum line and also, you know, some sort of identifying marking on the port itself. I know some vehicles might have on the underhood sticker a vacuum diagram to show you where all the uh, vacuum lines go. You might use that as a guide or perhaps a service manual uh, if you get lost or if you're in a situation where maybe the carburetor was already off the vehicle. So that, that can present a challenge. There are not that many vacuum lines on this carburetor. It's not that difficult to uh, see where everything goes. So I'm probably not gonna be marking anything. Another thing to watch out for is the vacuum lines that uh, go from one part of the carburetor to another, just leave those on. It's one less thing for you to lose. And you can deal with that on the bench as opposed to inside the vehicle. But when you go to take it off, just work carefully and methodically, try to mark things as you take it off. That way you can get everything back where it was when you took it apart. You know, come to think of it, you can also just take a picture of everything before you take it apart, and that can also help you with reassembly. Use line wrenches whenever remo removing lines that are like this uh, to avoid stripping things. And here's my prize. Now know that carburetors still have gas in them even after you remove them, so don't tip it upside down or else you'll get uh, a bunch of gas everywhere. But now let's uh, take this over to the bench. We'll disassemble it and get it ready for cleaning. Now that we have this off the car, and I hope you remember to mention that uh, the fuel filter was actually what I found that was leaking uh, gasoline. So it was just, for whatever reason around the seam, it almost looks a little bit bent uh, so that's the cause of the fuel leak. I actually like rebuilding carburetors and doing this kind of work. I think it's fun. <laughs> so I bought myself a kit. They're not that expensive. Uh, I think the kit for this was somewhere around $20. I also got a, a new float for it. And the float was also about $20. So I've, I've probably got about $40 into this rebuild. Also really important is this tag. Um, hopefully your carburetor still has one of these. This identifies the type of carburetor you have. In fact, that's the carburetor number right there. That's how I was able to find what kit I needed. So on your carburetor somewhere, 
there's going to be a, uh, a tag, there should be a tag, that identifies what type of carburetor it is so that you can purchase the correct kit. I'm going to start my disassembly with some of the uh, stuff on the outside. I'm just going to take that guy off because we don't want to get him in our carburetor dip. And I like to keep all my screws and parts and everything organized. So I will keep all this stuff together. In other words, the screws, everything. I'm just going to keep it all as one piece. And another thing, work in a clean area. Uh, these are a lot of small parts. You can very easily lose stuff. This is the choke assembly that I'm going to remove now. We don't want that to go in our chemical dip either. And with some of these screws, if they round off on you, you can use a pair of vice grips to get them off. Should be able to lift this up off of here. And this is a thermostatic choke. Um, the way this works is this is called, it's a bimetallic uh, material. It means there's two types of metal. Each type of metal has a different expansion rate when exposed to heat and cold. Because of that, one will pull on the other during a given temperature. So that will cause this choke to coil or uncoil depending upon how hot or cold it is. And you can see that it's directly connected to the choke plate here. So as the choke moves, it's moved by that spring right there. It's very important for the operation of the carburetor to work correctly is to have this. So we need to make sure that we get this set up correctly when we're done. But I also want to, before I get it further apart, just sort of play with it a little bit and make sure that it, it can move uh, nicely. And over here are your fast idle steps. So as the idle gets faster until the point where it's completely down to base idle. So that's what all these little steps are for. Like when you first start it up, it's also connected to the choke here, see? The more closed the plate is, the further down this will go. And because of that, you have different levels of idle. So you need to set this screw, this is the fast idle screw, uh, when the engine is cold, you need to set this up uh, at that time, which I believe mine is just a little bit too high. I'd like to see mine come down just a, a slight amount. But I also believe that this uh, choke is warmed by exhaust gas. So they do a lot of things to make your choke uh, work faster to get your engine to a place to where it's uh, more efficient. But I believe this is uh, run some exhaust gas up into here to, to warm this up. So here's our nice little gasket, a little one-eyed smiley face. Again, I'm gonna keep all these things grouped together. Three main parts, we've got our top cover here, we've got our main body, and then we've got the throttle uh, assembly down here at the bottom. Uh, sometimes screws will go all the way down through and hold the entire assembly together. Uh, so you will f often find different length screws when you do this. Um, the things that you want to watch out for, like, oh, there's that gas I spoke of. I don't see anything. Sometimes there's throttle linkage that's connected to the upper uh, levels here, like this one for the choke is, but I don't think that's going to present a problem. I'm also going to remove this uh, fuel filter that I'm going to replace anyway. Uh, it all wants to come out as one piece. I anticipated that. And it's bent. That might explain why it's leaking, but we've got a new one, so we can just toss this one. This whole cover is rotating down here, so this seal is gone. Here's one of those. This is for the accelerator pump linkage right here. Here's a piece of linkage that we're going to have to watch out for, and it looks like we can just remove this screw in the back here uh, and possibly just pull that out of there. Not sure. Carburetors are neat. I always thought they were. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help us any as far as removing this piece of linkage. That's going to happen when I actually get the upper assembly off of here. Uh, that's probably how that's going to go down. I'm just curious what's underneath this. I'm doing this completely blind. I've never rebuilt this carburetor before, but I've rebuilt other carburetors. So I'm hoping that my skills will take me through. Ah, what do we got here? That is, I believe, some form of emissions. Uh, deal here. It could be, it looks adjustable. I honestly don't know what that is. 
But we kind of got to get most of this torn down because I'm going to put it into a chemical dip that helps to clean it. Yeah, that's just the retaining screw. That's all that is. Hmm. Interesting. It's a little rubber diaphragm in there. Keeping everything together. Not a bad idea to maybe take pictures as you go to remember where everything connects also. You might also find that helpful. And I'm just gonna unhook this now that it's off of here. And away we go. And this, to test, you just push it down Put my finger on the end of it. If it stays closed like that, it's good. Watch what happens when I release. So I know that diaphragm is good. Let's hope I remember how all this goes back together. I'm just gonna start taking the screws off on the top. And this is what I also often do. I will lay the screws out in a pattern that tells me how it all came apart. That way I kind of get them in the same place. You can use like old egg cartons or something too and you can get as crazy, label everything and all of that. You can do all that. I'm not doing all that. I may be burning myself as a result, but you know, where's life without the risk? There's our long one. Remember that this one's up by the choke. But the way I've got these laid out here is pretty much how they're, they were on the carburetor. And as long as I don't bump the table or move things around, I should be good. I think we might be able to take the top of this off now. And we can. And we've got this little piece of linkage back here that we got to deal with. So once I lift this up off, I'm going to lift as straight as possible. Uh, there's also some choke linkage back here that's hanging up. I think what I'll do is I'll do this side since it's easier. Let me show you how these clips work. Sort of get in under them and twist. Work them out like that. You get your clip and then you can pull this off, I hope. There we go. Now I can get that out of the way. It's going to put that with its C clip. So I remember how it came apart. Now that that's undone, I can lift up over here this accelerator pump. There we go. That was kind of a pain in the butt. This is the accelerator pump. Every time you step on the accelerator, it forces down into this area and squirts a, a given amount of fuel into the engine uh, to help richen the mixture so that you can accelerate. Uh, we're going to be replacing that. There's a new one that came in the kit. Actually, they just gave us the cup. Uh, so we'll just be replacing that part of it. Remove any gasket material before you put it in any kind of chemical dip if that's what you're doing. And I strongly recommend that you do because it does clean things up very nicely. And try not to damage the gasket. And the reason I say that is because many times carburetor kits come with more than one set of gaskets. And it's good to know the gasket that came off. So I always try to save my gaskets just so that I can match them up. These tiny holes are everything to a carburetor. This is the float. Think of a toilet bowl. Your toilet bowl fills up and shuts off. This works the exact same way. So your carburetor is like a toilet. This is the fuel inlet here. Remember where the fuel filter was? So that's where the fuel comes in. So as the float comes up, it shuts off the fuel coming in. But as the fuel gets used, float level goes down, allows more fuel to come in. It's a fairly beautiful, easy system. I've always liked carburetors and the, their engineering and efficiency and how they were put together. We're just. Uh, have that little retaining clip it looks like. It's 
set that guy over there. And yeah, it looks like looks like this is going to come out as one piece. They may have a new one of these in the kit because it doesn't look like any of these parts are serviceable. Many times what you'll find is this is a serviceable part and that there's a little sort of a needle valve in here that opens and closes and allows the fuel to come in and it looks like I can just lift the float right out of here now. There's our float assembly. Now, I ordered a new float just for good measure. Over time, these can get uh, heavy with fuel, so they'll sit down a little bit lower and there, there is going to be a point where we're going to have to adjust the float level. Um, float level is critical in the carburetor, uh, so you want to make sure that it, it's correct. So if, the, if these get heavy and, and lay down inside the bowl a little bit further, it'll be letting in a little bit too much fuel. So we want to keep our float level as, as close to correct as possible. Now, these are our neoprene floats. They also offer these in brass, which are sealed, and those never go bad because like they never get a chance to soak anything in. However, they can get like maybe a little pinhole or something and they can get gas in there. I, I suppose they can also fail, but they don't seem to fail as much as something like this might. And we're down to just about nothing now. All these other components can uh, sort of stay in here. Uh, it looks actually fairly clean. I am going to find out what's behind here. And yes, I can remove the throttle body. I'm also gonna remove the throttle body. It looks like we've got three screws for that. Yeah, that was simple enough. See, carburetors are easy. When they say one barrel, that's what it means. There's only one hole, one throttle plate. Two barrels, got two of these, four has four. Uh, but that's all it is. But that is, when that's wide open, as much air can go to the engine as going into the engine at that time. Uh, but this is directly connected to the gas pedal. So when you step on the gas, it opens and closes this and in essence throttles the engine. Something you need to watch on throttle uh, plates is sometimes these shafts will get worn out and as a result it will cause a vacuum leak right here. So if you spray around the carburetor and you just rebuilt it and you know you had a vacuum leak and you're trying to address that, uh, the particular problem on quadrajets. Uh, so look for that. One last thing I'm going to remove here is the idle mixture screw. This guy is super important to uh, the base idle mixture. And I want to make sure that this area is really clean because this is, this is the idle. This really helps the idle. And we'll show that in the adjustment video, how we uh, make that all happen. But it should have a pointed end on it. Yeah. And that pointed end allows air to escape past the throttle body right there. And you control the amount of uh, fuel that goes into the engine uh, at idle through this screw. There's usually more than one if there's more than one throttle plate, but since there's only one here, there's only one throttle plate. But once again, I'm gonna save the gasket. That's completely torn down and ready to be cleaned. This has a couple more things. I wanna see just what's behind here. And I'm, what I'm looking for are like rubber parts and I wanna make sure that I get my cleaner into all the areas that I can and replace any gaskets that I can because really, that's kind of what it's all about. It's, it's sort of resealing everything and making sure that it's all uh, in a good and happy place. I sure hope I've got that gasket. <laughs> it's a valve of some type. What it actually controls, I am not sure. It's bimetallic. It looks like a valve that opens and closes like this. You can sort of see it opening and closing like that. I'm assuming there's some sort of port here. It looks like it's got some exhaust gas on it. Uh, so it looks like another gasket down in here almost. Another thing to watch out for is tiny little balls. I know that's funny. Yes, you must be aware of tiny little balls. Sometimes there are check balls inside of the assembly uh, that are kind of critical to the operation of the carburetor. Uh, so you don't want to lose those. And so far I don't see any that have fallen out. So I'm really surprised because many times, as I said, there might be some in here, but I don't see any.
And that's about as far as I'm going to tear this thing down. And uh, we're just going to soak this guy in some solution. Uh, this upper part also. As much of this as we can. Uh, yeah, I wanted to try to get that rubber piece out of there. All right, just to get all my bits out, I'm going to uh, remove this fastener for the accelerator pump. And hopefully I'll be able to take the assembly out. As you can see, it's on there, sort of spring-loaded. Uh, sort of needed to twist it around to get it off of there. But that's how it, how it went together. Once again, I'm going to try to keep all my stuff in place. And this, well, it's probably one of those things that only comes apart one way. And it does. Keep that also with that. And I've got my fingers crossed that I get a new one of these. You never know sometimes with carburetor kits, so try to, try to keep it. Yeah, mine's even got a little bit of tear in it. So hopefully I'll get a replacement for that. Otherwise, I'm not going to bother taking the shaft for the choke or anything out. I just, I don't see the point. But let's see if these items actually fit into my container. I have chosen an empty paint can. We'll see if these parts all fit down in here. It just fits in my little bucket. This is my caustic carburetor solution. Uh, you might send yours off to have it dipped, soaked, whatever, um, but this, this is a special solution just for doing this kind of stuff. It's, well, let's put it this way. It's eaten through two metal cans that I've kept it in over the years. <laughs> So be careful with it. But it's really good at cleaning all this stuff up. I probably could have done a better job of getting some of the gasket material off of there, but you know I can do that after the fact because it'll be all softened up and loose. That submerged most of it. Enough of it where I'm happy. Right, well, we've uh, let our parts sit in the caustic solution for a little bit. There's still some stuff on here. I'm just gonna go in here with uh, a wire brush and clean them up a little bit to get them uh, a little bit cleaner than what you see here and get rid of some of this excess gasket material. This is kind of why I waited because this is really good at dissolving this stuff. And there's just a little rinse. So I'm gonna go back through and do a little bit of agitation, a little bit, of, uh, a little bit more work to get these parts a little bit cleaner. And we'll jump back in when everything's all cleaned up. Now that we uh, have all our parts relatively clean, I'm going to say pretty clean, uh, I'm going to uh, dry them off with some compressed air and then we'll get into the reassembly. Right, well, we have uh, cleaned all of our parts. Everything's disassembled. We have our carburetor kit uh, and we also have a new float. One more thing I want to mention about these throttle bodies. I know I mentioned that sometimes uh, the shaft itself will get loose inside the board. Try and feel for that. Feel if there's any play down here, any back and forth or any up and down uh, in this because if there is you may have to replace this part uh, because a throttle operation can affect everything as far as the rest of the carburetor goes. So it's a good idea to make sure you check that out uh, thoroughly before you dive into your reassembly. But I believe all my parts are in order. I have all those parts there and I'm ready. Ready to do it. And fortunately, I, I haven't seen a carburetor kit yet not come with a set of instructions. So if you, if you get into a, a jam, let's say, and you don't know where something goes, oftentimes like building a model car or doing Legos, they give you some pretty good instructions for how this whole thing, here's an exploded view of everything. And also an explanation of all the stuff and what it is and what it does. Oh, so let's see if we can find out what that piece was that I was unfamiliar with. Uh, it's a hot idle valve. Okay, so it is a thermal valve, but uh, it's there to, I, I guess, put a little more air in to keep you from running rich. This guy here is the choke pull off. Looks like we're gonna start with the uh, float level adjustment. 
Okay, with uh, reassembly, I am going to uh, start with the float, but something I'll just cover briefly here. Uh, it appears that on the exploded view, you come over here real quick, there is parts 48 and 49 right there. And what those are, are the uh, check valve for the accelerator pump. Now when I disassembled this, and I'll look over the footage again after I do my edits, I didn't see anything come out. I didn't see a ball or anything. In fact, I even mentioned how it seemed odd that there wasn't any check balls or anything in here when I did the disassembly, uh, because that's some, normally something you have to watch out for, because the, check, the, the accelerator pump does use a check valve in that fashion. So what I've done is the carburetor kit has come with a new ball for the accelerator pump. So I have that. Uh, that actually goes into here. This is, this is the accelerator pump chamber here. And when it uh, fills up with fuel, this accelerator pump pushes down when you step on the gas, forces fuel up through this passage and out this tiny hole into the uh, venturi assembly here. But you don't want it to bleed back into this assembly. So to take care of that, you have this check ball, which will go in here. I'm gonna put this in towards the end. And then I've made uh, sort of a counterweight out of an old bolt. Uh, I've basically shaved it down to the correct size, did a little bit of machining on it. I looked at the uh, drawing and I've got the proportions, I believe, similar to what we have here. So just put that down in there. And from what I can hear, it's moving freely which is what it needs to do. It needs to be able to move up and down freely. But that's, that's my fix for that. Uh, this thing may not have had a check valve at all uh, when I took it apart. So I'm gonna put these uh, in a safe place here, put them inside this plastic bag so that they don't go anywhere. But as I said, I'm gonna start with the float adjustment, uh, which is one of the first things to do during we assembly. Uh, here's my new float, I'll put it next to the old float. So we need to swap this over from one float to the other for the new one. This little tab here is what you bend to get things correct. But in addition to that, I've also got to put in the uh, inlet valve. But the inlet valve on this, uh, some of them are different. This, this one's all one assembly. Here's the old one. This is the fuel that comes in. So this is like where the water from the toilet bowl for the toilet bowl would come into the toilet. And this meters the incoming fuel based on this little tab right here touching the end of the valve. So as the float goes down, it opens up, allows fuel to come in. As the float goes up, it shuts it off. Quite simply, that's how that works. Let's see, before I put the float in, after I put the float in, it's gonna drop it in. Then I believe there was like a little spring that went over the top of it. I think I'm also gonna put this in here at the same time. And there is a gasket, if I'm not mistaken, there it is. There's this gasket that needs to go around the outside. Yeah, this way we know how far it's going to, to drop. Gonna snug that up just a little. That's good. With carburetors, they're usually made out of a softer metal, so be really conscious of that so that you don't over torque things. Usually in our instructions, yeah, right here, we have our float adjustment and it looks like it should be bang on even with the top of this uh, float bowl. I'm gonna put my spring back in. Here's that sort of arched spring that seems to hold everything into place. All right, that keeps it from going anywhere. And then we tip it upside down and it looks like we're hanging down a bit too far. You can see that there. Because what we need to do is we need to back it up to where it's hanging down like that on that front part. So we need to, we need to bend that tab a little bit so that when this uh, comes all the way up, that's where it stops. So because that hangs down too far, I want to bend that tab back a little bit like this. I just want to bend it back towards this. 
put the retainer back in, flip it again. And as you can see, I'm getting closer. I've got to bend it back. I was hanging down a bit too far before, but I'm going to be bending it back up or back down because I went just a wee bit too far. Oh, almost there, so close. Like a few millimeters more. I think that nailed it. That's about as close as I think I can get. So float level's set. Sometimes the kit will come with like a little ruler uh, or something. There, now we've got the float taken care of. That's assembled. 